This year I'd like to attempt what's called the Advent of Code. Now, it's nothing super crazy. It's just 20-ish, 25 days of coding problems. And I'd like to take you along on that journey. Now, of course, some of it will be uh, foreign to you, but the goal of it is to make anybody able to program. So in that spirit, we'll be using Python. Python is a very uh, easy to learn language compared to some of the other ones like C, Rust, or uh, JavaScript. <laughs> that's probably a little controversial, but that's my take on it. Now, they do start out very easy, so this will be a bit of a short video. I just want to get it out there uh, and get you kind of interested in the series, if you're interested in programming, that is. And if you're not, well, come along for the ride. There's a lot of problems that we'll discuss, and maybe it'll shape your world a little bit. Now, the theme of this one, there's always a theme. It seems that we need to get the reindeer food, and they need something called star fruit. Now, that's, that's just a marketing gimmick because, you know, they want us to collect the 50 stars. The first one seems pretty easy. They're, they just got to get through this jungle, and they're going to be figuring out how many calories each elf needs based off of, you know, what each one is carrying and who has the surplus, and if I'm hungry, who do I ask? So the problem statement is that the elves take turns writing down the number of calories they have on them, and essentially and have it listed one item per line. So this is what they would have. It, you can imagine it on a piece of paper, or a magical piece of paper, maybe even Santa's a list. But this is how it kind of works out. Now what it is asking, as part of this problem, they want to know who has the most food. Now I'll tell you a bit of a spoiler. It is a very simple algorithm, and let's, uh, let's actually flip over to like a paint studio or something. <laughs> Hold on. So we know that this list is basically going to work out to something like five, maybe bigger numbers, but five, seven, nine, two, maybe zero. That person doesn't want to carry anything. And you as a human can very quickly realize that, well, nine is the largest number. And if we started to do this with more numbers, then we as humans kind of have strategies to find out that nine is the largest number. Now, what does a computer do? It doesn't really know that nine is the largest number, does it? No, it has to start from here and go all the way through the list until it has checked everything. Now, let's say we had a hundred or a thousand different entries. Maybe down here at entry 400, we have 10. So that is now the largest number. And then maybe another 300 go by and we just see ones. There's only, there's like a bunch of people that are just carrying one thing. Well, none of these are going to matter, the ones. The 10 is still mattering. Maybe after a thousand more entries, we see 12. So this person's carrying a lot of food. How do we know as humans that this is now the largest number? And how do we convert that to code? That's what we need to figure out for this assignment. So here we are. This is the input file. Uh, as I mentioned, it's very long. So there's a lot of elves on this journey. Turns out there's a bit, what, 2,244 lines to this file. Maybe not that many elves, but you know, they're hungry elves. So we'll have to figure out which one has the most food. Now in Python, Let's just quickly do this. Uh, we'll do a return value to our function. So from there, all we have to say is uh, largest value is equal to zero. Let's assume zero is the smallest number. You can't carry negative weight. And then call our input text file. And then give it a name. Let's use fp for file pointer. That's the standard. And it already knows what I want. And then we just say for line in data file, we can say if line equals this, the empty character or the empty line, then we want to set local maximum equal, or we want to compare if local maximus, maximus, if local maximum is greater than largest value, the current largest value that we have, then we want to set largest value equal to local maximum. Then that person, as we move through this list, we're saying, okay, well, we started with zero. Five is bigger than zero, so now this becomes a five. And then this will become a seven. And then this will become a nine. And then, of course, by the end of it, we'll have 12 using this set of uh, a little bit confusing set of numbers. <laughs> and I guess we don't need this one out here. It is a local maximum, so we can make the code a little bit simpler. All right, so now that we're in the folder, let's just quickly run the Python code by using Python 3, and then we'll give it the name solution.py. Oh, right, sorry, one more folder, deep. cd day one, and we'll say Python 3, solution.py, hello world zero. 
right? Because I'm not actually adding to the local maximum, right? So let's just quickly uh, add that very important detail in there. Plus equals line. Hopefully it doesn't complain. It might complain that one is a string and one is not. Yes. So we'll just quickly convert this to an int. Python is being stupid and probably wrap this in an else statement so that it's safe from harm. New line character, okay. Uh, that's probably the end of the file, actually. Or line equals... Or that's actually... This is just a new line line. So let's try this. This is just semantics at this point. There we go. So our program says that 3,000... Sorry, 35,228 is the answer. Um, that's a little small for you, probably. Let's zoom that right in. Maybe clear this up, put it at the top. There we go. Hello, world. <laughs> I forgot to get rid of the hello, world line. Uh, let's leave it in there. So it prints out 35228. Now we can go back to the advent of code page. Paste that in. That's not the right answer either. Answer is too low. Aha, there we go. A little bit wrong. <laughs> so I read in the entire thing first, and then I can cycle through it. A little bit different from what I'm used to. All right, so that does give us this very large number. Does that make sense? Well, can somebody carry 1.1 million calories of food? I'm inclined to believe that that's not correct. Maybe let's, hold on, let's uh quickly do a smaller input file. So let's just make a small.txt. And we'll do numbers that we know. Two, four, five, six. And then we'll have one, two, three. And let's say a bigger one. What is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven fives, 35. That'll be the biggest one so far. And we'll do two, 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 two. And nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Save that and run it. 66. So maybe it is, maybe it's correct. 9 plus 8 is 17, plus 7 is 24, 30, 35, 39. Oh, that's not going to be 66. So it's not getting reset. Oh, that's why. Uh, in here, we need to just set local maximum equal to 0. So that million was the entire file. <laughs> so we'll do input dot text dot text. Now let's run it again. 74,711. That seems more realistic. Turn to day one, and then we'll input this as our answer. There we go. One gold star. Now there is a second part. Um, let's see. Let's see if it's easy, and then we'll, we'll go from there. By the time we calculate the answer, they've already realized that the elf carrying the most calories of food might eventually run out of snacks. That's true. To avoid this unacceptable situation, the elves would like We'd instead like to know the total calories carried by the top three elves carrying the most calories. That way, even if one of those elves runs out of snacks, they still have two backups. And maybe let's quickly run back to our paint. If you get rid of some of this mess. So we'll just go back to this set. So if we're going through this, maybe we'll add a couple more numbers. So maybe a 10, a 9, a 7, a 2. Actually, you know what? We should probably do this. We'll move it here. So this will be the 5. Then we see the 7. So this becomes a 7, and this becomes a 5, and we still have a 0. There we go. That makes more sense. Then we see the 9. So then it goes 9, 7, 5. So we'll check the largest number. If the thing we have is larger than the largest number, then everything needs to shift down. So when we come into here, we can do this value. So if the local maximum is larger than the largest value, then we want to do this. We want to make the largest value uh, move down. So it'll be second largest equals largest value. And then we'll say third largest equals... Oh, no, we have to do this in the other order. From smallest to biggest. Second largest. Second largest equals largest value. Largest value equals local maximum. Now, we can also have the case where the second largest is smaller than the local maximum. So we'll do local maximum is greater than second largest. Now, in this case, we don't want to touch the largest value. So we'll just leave that out. So 
we'll say third largest equals second largest and second largest is equal to local maximum. Finally, if we have the local maximum being greater than just the third largest, then we want to say third largest is equal to local maximum. And I think the rest doesn't matter. I think we can run this as is. So let's do that. And we'll print the return value down here. And maybe let's just hide this because I think I think we've got the, the input working. So we'll just quickly run through here. And it says it's the same number. That's not right because we haven't updated this. Largest value, no, no, no. We need largest value plus second largest plus third largest. Now <laughs> that does that this does mean that we didn't break the underlying code, which is good. But now we have a triple number, 209,000. Now, a quick check, just to make sure that we're not crazy and that this is actually working. Pull out a calculator and do 74711 times 3. Now, if it's bigger than this number, then we have a bit of a problem, but it's smaller. So maybe we're right. So let's run to the webpage. There's our answer. Let's submit it. And there we go. Second answer was easier than the first. Now, I hope this wasn't too scary for you. It is kind of, a little bit, sort of, easy, um, and they get harder as we go along. So if you kind of enjoy coding and, you know, want to try a little bit more, maybe get into coding, try Python or another language of your choice and give this a go. It's not the most complicated stuff. There'll be 24 more days. And even if you don't like programming, if you don't want to do the coding aspect, go through the problem and say, how would I solve this? Work on your problem solving skill and come out with a solution. It'll save you about an hour of time, maybe two, but at least then you'll have that knowledge for future problems that you run into. Past that, that's all for me. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.